Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. So far in the course, we've been looking at examples that execute our code as soon as the game begins or as soon as the code is called. In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at delays and timers and how we can use them to better control the execution timing of our code. Let's get started. And now that we're back in Unreal, Let's take a look at our first node, and that is the delay node. The delay node, as the name implies, allows us to delay executing portions of our code. And we can specify the amount of time for that delay in the form of a float value. So let's go ahead and add our node, right click, and search for delay. And you'll notice here that we have three different types of delays. The regular delay, delay until next tick and retriggerable delay. Let's go ahead and choose the first one here and let's connect it in between the begin play and event get random value. All right, and now let's go ahead and add a bit more time here instead of 0.2 seconds, let's make this two seconds. Now we can compile and if we go back to our map and click simulate, you'll see that we'll wait two seconds and then we display Unreal Engine. Let's go ahead and stop and go back to our blueprint. Now, there are some scenarios where we may want to have a random delay before executing our code. And from our previous lessons, we know that we could use an array of values and then get a random value from the array. That would be one way of doing this, but instead, let's go ahead and show you guys another much easier way. There is an actual node that would return a random float within a range. So let's go ahead and click and drag, and let's search for random float. And out of all of the different options, select random float in range. And as you can see, this node returns a random value between the min and the max. So in this case, let's go ahead and, and choose zero and let's make the max, let's say two seconds. Now let's go ahead and compile and let's go back to our map. And now I'm going to simulate and stop several times so you can notice the difference in the timing. Now let's go back to our blueprint. Now let's remove this node and take a look at another example. If you recall from earlier, we saw three different types of delay nodes. Let's take a moment to look at another delay node and look at the important difference. If you go ahead and right click, search for delay, and let's select retriggerable delay. And there's a big difference between the regular one in the retriggerable delay. The regular delay node, once it's called, it will wait the specified duration here before executing the code. However, if another execution comes to the delay node, while it's still waiting, that execution will simply be ignored. In other words, if you trigger a delay and then trigger it again, that second call will simply be ignored until the delay is completed. However, the retriggerable delay, as the name implies, will simply reset the duration every single time the node is called. And we can actually test this easily by adding our delay nodes to our custom uh, event here, which of course, if you recall from a previous lesson, we can call from the editor. So let's go ahead and add a regular delay first. And in this case, let's make this two seconds. Let's go ahead and compile. And if we go back to our map and I hit on simulate, what I'm going to do is click on simulate, wait for the event to be triggered, as you can see here. And I'm going to click the button here to call the function again. 
But before the two seconds is completed, I'm going to press the button again to see if I can re-trigger that delay. And as you can see, even if I'm continuously clicking the button, the delay will ignore my second request until the first delay is completed. Let's go ahead and stop, go back to our blueprint, and let's see what happens if I replace it with this other type of delay. And just like before, let's make this two seconds. If we compile, go back to our map, and I'll do the same thing. I'll click simulate. I'll wait for it to run one time, as you can see here. And now I'm going to press the button and keep pressing it before the two seconds is up. And as you can see, I continue to click a button and every single time I click it, the delay is restarted. And now that I stop clicking it, after two seconds, the delay will be executed. Let's stop and go back to our blueprint. Two very important differences and two very important nodes that are useful in different circumstances. Now, many times during gameplay, you may want to repeat a portion of your code on a specific interval. Say that we wanted to call our custom event every two seconds. We could do this by using a regular delay node. So let's go ahead and disconnect this first. Let's delete it and make some space. And we could accomplish this simply by adding our delay to the end of our code here and simply calling our function one more time. The name of our custom event is EV get random value. So we can simply drag and search. So you can see, select EV get random value. And if I zoom out here, you can see exactly what's going on. Event begin play will call our custom event, which will call our custom function. After everything's done, we'll wait two seconds and call our custom event one more time. So if we click compile, go back to our map and we click simulate, we can see now that we are executing our code every two seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and stop and go back to our blueprint. Executing your code on a specified interval is actually a very common use case, but there's a much easier way to do it than by using delay nodes. And that is by using the timer node. A timer, as the name implies, simply executes code after a certain amount of time. You also have the option to loop the timer and basically recreate the exact same functionality that we have here without having to recursively call the same custom event or function. There are also other benefits of using a timer instead of a delay. So let's go ahead and remove these nodes here. And to add a timer, simply right click and search for set timer. And you can see here that we have several options. Let's pick the first one here, set timer by event. And as you can see this node here, I'm gonna get it all the way up here to the begin play, takes a custom event. You can specify the time and you can specify whether you want the event to loop or not. So let's connect our begin play here. And to simply connect an event, you will click and drag from the red square from our custom event all the way to the event pin of our timer. And now let's add two seconds here and click on looping. And now we are simply going to compile and test it out. Click on simulate. And you can see that we have replicated the same functionality as before. Our timer is calling our custom function every two seconds. Let's go ahead and stop and go back to our blueprint. There are other options as well. If you expand here by clicking on the little arrow, you can see that we can add an initial start delay to our timer, and we can even add a variance to that start delay, effectively recreating that random delay example that we did earlier. Let's go ahead and remove this 
and search for the other type of timer. So right click and search for set timer. And this time let's select set timer by function name. And we'll connect it to begin play just as before. But in this example, instead of connecting an actual event, we are simply going to add the name of our function or custom event as a string. So in this case, we'll add EV get random value here. We'll add two seconds and let's add looping. Compile, let's go back to our map and let's click on simulate. And just like before, our timer is calling our function or custom event every two seconds indefinitely. Let's go ahead and stop and go back to our blueprint. Now you may be wondering, what is the point of using a timer if we can do the exact same thing with a delay? Sure, it's a little bit more convenient, but is there more to it than that? And actually there is. We have more control over timers than simple delay nodes. So let me show you that right now. Let's remove this node here and right click on the return value here and let's promote this to a variable and let's call this handle and let's compile. You see this variable called handle holds a reference to the timer and allows us to do things like pause and unpause the timer or even clear the timer. So it gives us a lot more control and flexibility than simply using a delay. Let's go ahead and test that now. So drag our handle variable to the event graph and drag and search for pause. And you can see that we have the option to pause our timer by handle. So click, and you can see that now, not only can we execute our timer and loop it, we can now pause it whenever we want. Go ahead and drag from here. Let's look for unpause and select it. This node will of course unpause timer if it's already paused. And finally, the third one that is very important is the ability to clear or invalidate the timer. So once again, go ahead and drag and search for clear and select clear and invalidate timer by handle. We have three different functions here that gives us a lot more control. So let's create three custom events that can be called from the editor so we can control our timer during gameplay. Right click search for custom event and let's call this one pause we can connect it and now we can select call in editor let's do the same thing for these two other nodes all right let's go ahead and compile and what we've done is we are using our own handle that we are setting on begin play and we can now pause, unpause, or clear our timer during gameplay. So let's go back to our map and let's click on simulate. As you can see, from begin play, we are calling our timer and it's executing every two seconds. If we go back to our details panel here, we can click on pause. As you can see that now our timer is paused and it will remain paused indefinitely until we unpause it. So click on unpause and the timer immediately resumes execution. We can also clear the timer. If we simply want to stop the timer completely and now that it's cleared, it doesn't matter if we press unpause or pause. So you can see the timer is completely invalidated. Let's go ahead and stop and go back to our blueprint. So as you can see, timers not only give us an easier way to execute code frequently, but we can also have way more control of what happens with our code. Now let's do a quick recap. Delays allow us to delay code execution by a specified amount of time. Regular delay nodes will ignore execution requests during the delay period. Retriggerable delay nodes will reset the delay with every execution request. 
timers also allow us to delay execution by a specified amount of time. We can easily loop our code execution by checking the boolean. Timers also allow for variability of the delay. And finally, timers can use a handle reference which provides the ability to pause, unpause, and clear the timer at any point during gameplay. If you want to practice what we learned, come up with one example where a regular delay node, a retriggerable delay node, and a timer would be the best method to use. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.